What's happening, Rich? This is Riot Starter TV. Riot Starter TV. And I wanted to uh, come to you today and, um, you know, give you an update on some of the things that's currently taking place. Um, we're here today uh, fighting on behalf of a brother who's on death row, who um, the state of Missouri, uh, if they have their way, they would like to... Uh, give this brother an expiration date uh, of November 29th. And as you all know, here at Riot Started TV and Black Power Media, you know, we fight. And we're not a uh, program, program or a, um, a platform that's here strictly for, you know, to be seen or liked or any of that type of stuff. We deal with and we fight for and fight on behalf of real people. Uh, today, we have the opportunity to uh, bring on a brother who um, who is no stranger to our platform. We've been uh, working and fighting on his behalf for a few ticks. And, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that he was represented properly. Um, along with him today, I have a, uh, a guest co-host. And... She is no stranger to our platform or program either. Um, you know, so I wanted to uh, have the opportunity to bring her on as well to kind of uh, give some thought and insight before we bring on, um, you know, our brother. I have with me today um, live Dr. Joy James and our guests coming out of uh, the New York area. How are you doing today, Dr. James? I'm doing well. How are you? Okay, okay. Good to have you on uh, to rap with us today and to represent on behalf of uh, our brother, uh, Kevin Johnson. We have uh, our good brother, Kevin Johnson, on the phone with us right here today. Um, Kevin, how are you doing, brother? I'm doing well. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Good to have you on. Um, we wanted to invite you to the platform today to kind of... Um, give folks a, a idea from your mouth because we've been talking about your case for a few months now, um, you know, definitely along with uh, some of the comrades in Missouri. So um, wanted to, uh, you know, wanted you to speak to the people and, um, you know, give us an idea of who Kevin Johnson is, you know, can you give us a background of, you know, how you came up? So you, so you have um, 
you know, you said you had a child at an early age, and today your child yeah. is how old? Right on. Congratulations on that. And your grandson, I understand your grandson was just born in September? Yeah, that's been the night, yeah. Right on, right on. Seven weeks before my birthday. Seven weeks before your birthday. Okay. And and how old are you now, if you don't mind us asking? I'm 37 now. 37. 37. Okay, right on, right on, right on. So um, you, you said, you know, you mentioned that you had a, um, you came up, uh, mom had uh she was addicted to you know the the whole plantation poison um uh, you know yeah. the, the drug situation and your father yeah. you know like many of us you know he ran into situations dealing with you know incarceration so on and so forth so um, I'm, we're pretty sure that yeah. that impacted you as as a whole you know what what was that like oh, yeah, yeah. How many how many siblings did, did you um do you have? You said you all end up getting separated. Is that what you said? Dr. James, do you have any uh, thing you wanted to add or questions? Yeah. Hi, Kevin. When I was reading different, you know, news articles about you, it mentioned that your teachers and your principal, you stayed in touch with them and that they were very supportive and still are of you. Could you say more about, even in the face of all these hardships, how you were able to make connections? and people could see the value that you have? I, I don't know if you could hear Dr. James well, but she was saying that um, she had read uh, in your story uh, something to the effect that you had certain teachers that were supportive of of your situation. And, you know, um, I, I, what was the other part? I'm sorry, Dr. James. That given all the hardships, 
they could see that he had value. And I was wondering if you wanted to share something about how he's able to make connections to community, to school people, and how those help to shape him. All right. Did you hear that, Kevin? A little, if I can get it on. Okay. okay. Yeah. Ba basically, you know, um, you know, your teachers are saying how you had value and, um, you know, how were you, made, how were you able to, they, they could see your value. And, you know, she was asking, how were you able to uh, make connections to, you know, them community, you know, despite, you know, the, the things you were going through, I believe that's what she said. You said one of your My teachers? Wow. Right, right. So the, you said, did you say your first or your fourth grade teacher? First grade teacher. Man, you must have had a serious impact. It was over 30 years ago when she met him, right? Yeah, so she's known you, Dr. James was saying, she's known you over 30 years as a teacher, correct? Yeah, yeah. Wow. exactly. Yeah, 30 years, 31 years to be exact. Wow, man, that, that's, man, listen, you, you are on, you're, you're locked up, you know, in facing the charges that you have, and you have some folks, mm -hmm. a teacher from 31 years ago um, coming to visit you. That says a lot about your character, my man. Yeah. Right on, right on, man. Right, right, right. So, so tell us, you know, because you know, again, we we've read things, and it's, you know, reading and hearing from the the horse's mouth, so to speak, is, you know, sometimes it's different, you know, and that's why we wanted to have you on because we wanted to hear your voice, not just, you know, what, you know, what the script say, you know what I'm saying? We want to know what you say, you know? So, um, you know, tell us about, you know, about, about your brother, uh, Bam Bam, you know, because we understand that, that, you know, he meant the world to you and, you know, yeah. Make sure I'm protecting and stuff like this. So as he got older, he 
was uh, a happy go lucky kid, and, and we knew he had this uh, problem with him. And you know, doctors always said he wasn't supposed to live past five, but you know, five came and went, and he was still breathing, still doing what he's doing, still had the same uh, personality. So, you know, nobody really ever took up uh, his illness. And, uh, well, like I said, just growing up, you know, we had this strong bond. We ended up living together my last year, out there the entire year, 2004. We stayed together, and it was you know, leading up to July 5th. We stayed together. He did things for me. I did a lot of things for him. So, right. but, um, you know, so how, how do you get the nickname uh, Bam Bam, Dr. Mm -hmm. James is asking? So you said the the last year that you were on the streets, um, you know, you all you said you all stayed together. It was that was that the first year? Was that the first year that y'all actually spent the entire year in the same? Before, before we get into, you know, um, the events that took place, I, I want to kind of, you know, dip back a little bit, you know, just rewind a little bit on, on the childhood, right? Because again, we, we read different things, but I wanted to know like, okay, so we had, uh, you know, for all practical purposes, you know, I'm, I'm from Bridgeport, Connecticut. I was raised in the quote unquote hood myself in the projects I'm 45 minutes away from home, right? Um, you know, I was raised during the the era of, you know, crack, dope, you know, that whole, you know, the 80s. You know what I mean? So, you know, you know, so I, I just want to give you some background just so that you can understand that uh, I'm not just coming from a quote unquote journalist perspective, but but understanding because oftentimes folks don't really understand, you know, the foundation. Right. So um, you, you persevered clearly. You know what I'm saying? You, you fought against, uh, you know, the, the the stereotypical odds, right? Um, you know, what was like, you know, okay, so you said you grew up, you all separated, so on and so forth. But prior to that, you're going through these situations. I read something about when you all were like three, four, five years old. Can, can you tell us, like, what was that like? Uh, so, me, my brother... We're standing in this little house with my mom, you know. And we don't know what's going on with kids, so, you know, my mom, she was real, like, I said at the beginning, like, you know, she was nurturing, so he go to sleep with us, he told us, cut us, and go to sleep, but when that habit got stronger, you know, you go to sleep, and we go to sleep, and we wake up, she's not there, you know. And that's when, you know, the habit gets so bad where you use know, all your money to support the habit, and then the stuff that the state is giving you, he's taking that to support her habit, so we, Basically, we don't have any food in the house, so we kind of got to find it we can, go through garbage. Uh, I remember a few times me and my brother was eating, had to eat some roses just to uh, try to, you know, survive. Okay. There was one moment where we had to just try to take the other and knock around, but we couldn't catch it. But, you know, that was, it got that, that bad to where we were trying to get anything in our body. And so, and me and my brother, we just so tight today because that was just for a long time, it was just me and him. And this is your older brother, correct? Yeah, he's about, 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 he's
Mm. I can remember, uh, you know, we go to school, you know, every time we come home, we had to go to uh, the uh, preschool. We were on the bus in this preschool, so we got on the preschool bus. It's just me and him. It's just me and him. Right by hours. Mm. So, you know, with that said, you know, two little boys, you know, well, I was in the stuff, so lots of injuries happen. Mm hmm. Okay, so um, yeah, um, um, you know, I, I could say I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, but what does that mean, right? Um, you know, yeah, I, um, you know, but I'm, I'm glad you're here, and and um, we we gonna we gonna fight to keep you here. Um, let let's talk about, yeah, no doubt. Let let's talk about um, you know, that day in in June, uh, the events that took place. Yeah. You, you said what? I'm sorry. Uh, July, July. July, my bad. Yeah, let, let's talk yeah. about that. Okay. I mean, what? what... Uh, uh, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I was just saying what, what was the, the events that led up to uh, that particular moment? Okay. Uh, I was already, uh, I was on probation for a misdemeanor and uh, I was wanted had a little uh, probation violation warrant and so the local cops in the neighborhood they have been looking for me for maybe like a few months, you know. And uh this particular, this particular day, day after fourth of July, July fifth, uh I woke up, my daughter was there. I think my family down there was looking my daughter earlier and so uh, I took her I, I fed her took a bit of work, we played, we fell asleep, I brought her back to my room, she slept on the bed, I'm watching her sleep. And in that moment, you know, I was still kind of, I was holding my head up in the water, but I was still trying to struggle, I was still struggling in life, so. And then, in some ways, in that moment, I mean, I was just kind of thinking about what my future to do, what I do with my future, and just kind of come up with a game plan. And it just so happened, while I was doing that, I looked out the window, two local officers were out there, uh, conversing at a, uh, like they said, they call And I was got my, my truck was parked up the street, I had an SUV. Uh, over the board, so they uh, drove up the street and got the uh, inspection in the car or whatever. And at this point, uh, I'm standing, I have, I had a gun, I have my gun in my car. And I'm standing, I'm like, they're gonna throw my car and get that gun. And so uh, I'm facing more charges. So I ran, I grabbed my keys. And this time, I'm staying with my great grandma. This is not my great grandma lives in one house, and my, my grandma lives in the house next door, in the house next door. So. I grabbed my keys, I ran to the living room where Bam Bam was, and he's laying on the floor. And I didn't really pay attention. I should have paid attention more. He was laying on the floor. It's a beautiful day outside. He's a 12 year old kid. And it's not normal for him to be laying on the floor in the middle of the afternoon. Right. And uh, I didn't pay no attention to it, so I gave him the keys and told him to take the keys next door and tell Grandma Pat to act like he's driving the car. So the police went to it. And so he, my little brother, he always jumped the doctor. Yeah. 
Before you before you go there, Dr. James is asking what 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 were they saying was the um you know the the, the reason for him you know going to the hospital was it cardiac arrest a seizure what was the situation? Well, I I, I was told anything. I was in the house. Uh, okay. When my grandma came over. She was like, you know, he passed out. That's all he kept saying. He passed out. Okay. And, uh, and that's when she was like, let him go over there. But at this time, she was like, you know. And we and I'm assuming this had to be something that was going on before that incident, and that's probably why he, when I come, you know, in hindsight, that's probably why he was laying on the floor when I ran in there. Right, right. Uh, and we also, you know, did, we're sorry for your loss. That must have been extremely traumatic, given how much you loved him and, you know, he was your baby brother. I mean, you know, it, it, I don't. We, we're not. We're not to judge on on you know what happened and how it happened because we don't. None of us have control of that, right? 
Um, you know, and and we, uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, we are definitely, you know, sorry, you know, for the loss because of the fact that, you know, there's the, the state, ain't, the state ain't satisfied. Let's just say that, right? So, I want to, I want to ask. Um, uh, so this takes place. Do they pronounce him uh, uh, deceased, like immediately, or how, how did things go from there after he gets to the hospital? Like this, that's the same sort of 
work he had when he gave me it and that wasn't it. So, and I don't know. I don't know. But that, I don't know what happened. I think it was the uh, I want to say like the, the guilt. You know, we always give guilt. You know, I think it's human nature. You know, I was feeling so guilty about the situation. But when he smirked, I think something else it triggered from him and uh, I think he killed my brother. Sort of, sort of blacked out. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So, um, Doctor James is saying, uh, do, do you feel like the uh, the guilt that you had for Bam Bam's death was what uh, caused you to to lose control when you saw saw the officer? Do you feel that was uh, part of it, or? No, no, you saying the one, the one that uh, was was shot. He wasn't the one that was stepping yeah. over. Is what you saying? responding to the system itself and not the individual and and that that i think that's that's the reality of it you know it wasn't like you said you know so it wasn't just it wasn't him it was like what he represented yeah yeah so what what happens from there do you do you do you, you run you stick around like what's the situation I'm going with my car so I can get in there and go to my father's house. And as I'm walking, the 
people keep coming up to me like, K- KJ Kevin was on, that was on, you know? But I'm young, he killed my brother. And I think it became like more of a, uh, like a thing. I mean, it's a thing my brother because it felt like everybody was targeting me. Like, what you doing? What are you doing? What you doing? Right. And uh, so, yeah, I, I walked around. I, I walked to the corner. I got to another corner. And I made a, I tried to make a right into the 400 block. The shooting happened in the 300 block. So I made a right into the 400 block, which made me I'm going away from the city, moving even further away. And at this corner, my mother just so happened to be there. And uh, her face kind of jumped out the crowd. She's like, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? I was like, you killed my brother. She's like, oh, nobody killed down there. He just died. I said, yes, he did. And it's what she said, what about Corey? You know, and my daughter, at this time, she was like, my tenant, you know, he was my peace of mind and everything. So I always felt comfortable and at peace and at ease, and especially when I was around her. So, you know, when she said that, it was like, I snapped out of whatever I was in. I was back to the old regular old Kevin. So I needed to see her. I needed to see her. So all of a sudden, I took back. I took off up the 300 block of another street. The shooting happened in 300 block of Oscar Brooks. So I ran up the 300 block of Saratoga, which is the way I normally go to get to my daughter's house. And then I go up that street and I cut through some bars. And this don't happen when I cut through the yard. That's where the officer car had hit a tree. Mm-hmm. However, when I came up through the, I came up through the gangway, uh, it was nobody in the car. I saw nobody in the car. So it's like he's becoming more real to me. You know, like, oh man, I just killed this man. He laid over in his uh, car dead. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, yeah. Like I said, the car hit another car, so the, the, the car that it hit was kind of blocking off the path a little bit, so I had to take the angle. So I'm running past the car, and so, so I'm running, I'm ready to like a slow dive now, because I ran probably like a, uh, probably like a whole block and a half, two blocks. And so I'm ready to slow dive, and like something hit me out my peripheral, and I turned and I shot. And that was the thing, it was, it still happened to be an officer, he was kind of crawling. And it still happened to hit him in the, uh, the back of the head. Yeah. And, uh, and that's when I was like, I kind of like, kind of freaked out a little bit. And, uh, something, you know, so I started walking towards them. I ended up falling into a whole bunch of debris in the yard from the uh, car that they crashed into. I bailed the gun went off again, but the gun didn't hit anybody. It just, uh, ricocheted or whatever. And, uh, and that's when I kind of fell into like, maybe it being like blood all over the sidewalk. And I fell into like a, uh, a little puddle with that. And as I stood up, you know, I'm looking at the blood of my hand. Because I ain't never shot nobody, you know, or none of this stuff. So this is like the first time I've seen blood to this magnitude. Right. Okay, and, uh, you know, like a shot, like, you know, and it's all because of me. And anyway, the next one, the neighbor across the street came out. He was my uh, little league, you know, baseball, basketball coach. He came out, he was like, he said, Kevin, I just remember his voice, Kevin, what are you doing? Get out of here. So he said that, I thought, that's why I just walked out. I started walking down the street. And then maybe like a right, half a block away, that's when I started running. Everything started kind of like hitting me. I was about running, running through the yard, back in the car. And uh, <clears throat> that's when uh, I see my cousin on the other street. He's coming up. And he's like, yeah, hey, give me the gun, give me the gun. I gave him the gun. And I, like my issue mind, I went to my father's house. Yeah. So, so, you know, eventually you were... Uh, um, apprehended, charged, and you're sentenced to, you're given the death penalty as far as that, was that the uh, initial charges or? Yeah, uh, initially, you know, he charged me with a first degree murder. They charged me with a robbery. They charged me with 388 for robbery. And then they charged me with murder. And then they charged me with a robbery. And then they charged me with murder. And then they charged me with a robbery. And then they charged me with murder. And then they charged me with a robbery. 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 And then they charged me with a So how did how did the defense deal with his emotional and psychological needs as part of the defense strategy? I mean, he was in crisis continuously. Can you hear Dr. James? Uh, I didn't hear that part. Okay, she said, "How did the defense deal with um, the psychological trauma um, uh, as, as part of it?" That's the worst part of it all. That's the worst part of it all. He he refused to give me. 
psychologically evaluated and she refused to uh, even even entertain that kind of defense. He was he was nineteen. He the brain doesn't form fully until you're twenty five. No, she was saying you were nineteen and your brain wouldn't fully be formed until you would be twenty around twenty five. Um, and and, and you, you were saying that your defense was saying that um, they didn't want to pursue that type of strategy. Yeah, yeah they uh, yeah, yeah. First of all, when I first got charged, it was a, one of the, like high price lawyer and uh, like lawyer that I was talking to, and he was trying to take the case pro bono. But this is before they went up to the enhanced the capital murder. So capital murder, you know, a capital murder trial. Mm -hmm.
series, during them, that the baby can come into the jury room, the liberation room. So it's always immediately at the trial. Speculation that the uh, baby overheard the verdict count and uh, went back and probably told the prosecutor or the judge, and they were kind of in cahoots and try to hurry up and call a uh, mistrial. Because if you look at the, like, the transcript, of them talking behind closed doors transcript, and you see the prosecutor is like, he full on, they can go back there and deliberate, deliberate. And suddenly, like two hours later, he's like, no, nah, I think we called this trial. But, uh, so something happened. You know? oh. Right. So, yeah. So. I should have been convicted. I should have been convicted of second degree murder at that point. Right. Right. So, Dr. James wanted to ask, um, uh, how do you? How did you see the, uh, the nearly two decades of, um, you know, your growth and development, uh, as far as like raising your daughter, you know, from behind the wall, and, um, you know, how do you imagine the future of? You know, raising your grandson and 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 supporting your daughter. Uh, man, that's, that's been a big change. Like when I got in, I went in in nineteen. You know, I'm, I'm a dad. I love her and stuff, but I don't think I was actually dedicated to her at that point. You know, I'm fighting this case. However, uh, September two thousand seven, leading up to my second trial, her mother was murdered. And mm -hmm. So the. Uh, just to kind of lean to her, he allowed, because the county no contact visit, but he allowed me to have a contact visit with her. And I'll never forget, she came in there, she was just, because she didn't really know what's going on. She was like, uh, Daddy, uh, Mama Dean, she had Kool-Aid coming out of her. But I'll never forget that. And to look at her eyes and, you know, see how innocent she was. I like right there, I knew I had to kind of dedicate myself to her, being her only mm -hmm. parent. So. Wow, and this is what year? I'm sorry. This is, this is two years after I got arrested. This is July. I mean, I got arrested in July. Well, I got arrested in July eight in two thousand five, and she got murdered July. I mean September, September eighth, two thousand seven. But my daughter, they had just turned four. She had just turned eighteen, and uh, ex boyfriend. Uh, I guess he went COVID will to break up, and caught her in Walmart. Uh, they were leaving Walmart, and uh, from what I understand, uh, with no words, no nothing, no altercation, he just stopped. to have him to care for her th that way despite all the you know the obstacles he she really knows he loves her right did, did you hear dr james uh -huh. she she was saying that she's so lucky to have you despite all the obstacles she knows that you love her and that's that's a that's an honorable thing man and um yeah yeah no nah, that's that's uh -huh. a, Right. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, on a side note from from the uh, interview, I want to say also that there are some members of our organization who already requested um, from uh, Michelle from ML um, some type of point of contact because uh, we intend on um, supporting her and your grand grandson regardless of whatever the outcome is. So, so just know that, yeah, just know that whatever the outcome is, you know, and hopefully, you know, you know, you'll be free one of these days to do it yourself, but we're going to take on the, uh, take on that as a, uh, as, as a responsibility and an assignment. So I want you to know that we, there's already been talk about that. So, you know, if that can give you any type of, uh, you know, uh, assurance for lack of better words. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I mean, so, so she's been, she's been going through it with you, you know, even with the, you know, loss of the mother, you know, you and, and this glooming over her head. I mean, you know, I, I, I worked on, um, you know, as an organizer, I worked on, worked with several different, um, families and individuals, uh, you know, who were on death row, um, going back, you know, for a couple of decades. And I, I, I want to know, like, from you, like, you know, here it is, the state is talking about, you know, an expiration date. I mean, it, it must be, I mean, for us, it's, it's insane because for us, we feel like it's another act of, of terror because it's like, okay, boom, on this date, we plan on, on, on taking your life. How, how have you been able to, to, to cope and, and like, uh, you know, you just said one of your biggest fears was, you know, um, you know, your daughter just being out there. Yes. Talk, talk to us about that, man. And also, if you don't mind, like, you know, the, the, the situation itself, like, you know, what's your feelings towards it at, at this age, regardless of what the outcome is? asking how do you or do you find comfort in spirituality or any of the faiths dr james said uh, yes, uh, uh yeah. I, I pray a lot and you know that i say let go and let god so i'm trying to be strong enough to do that you know but it, it's always going to be that word i pray i pray i got people pray i try to manifest and you know that's what i do every day you know i mean it's hard for me because i'm a I'm a realist, it's like it's hard to be me not to see what's in front of me. You know? I can daydream all day, that's one of my go-to things. You know, I always be like, like, if I can't have the life I want to, in reality, mm -hmm. if I have the life I want to in my head, so that's the place I go to try to, you know, get out of my head. But, you know, it's, you know, mm -hmm. you know hard to verbalize. So. Right, right, right. Um, you know, uh, we know you have, you know, you gotta, gotta go, but, um, 
if, if there was uh, any words um, or advice that you would have for, you know, youngsters coming up right now, you know what I'm saying? For, for, for young brothers and sisters that's out here right now that, that's trying to uh, make a way and they have similar conditions um, and circumstances, what, what, what would you say if you could, if you could speak to them now? Dr. James, you had anything you wanted to? Uh... I just want to echo what you said, Kalanji, about people are here for Kevin and here for his family. And just from the zone of academia, we've been talking about your case at, you know, Yale, Dartmouth, University, you know, people okay. know and they're learning more and we plan to do more. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, definitely, definitely. Um, you know. So, just know. Yeah. So, and, and to translate that, just know that you're not riding alone. You know, and and we're not and and we're not just gonna sit back idly. You know, you know, just with our fingers crossed, and and, and saying that's a damn shame. You know what I mean? So, just, just know that. And that there's folks that are. Uh, yeah, it's literally. Uh, fighting on your behalf from from the, uh, the 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 block to the boardroom. And if I can't say something, you know, when, you know, like anybody want to, I'm very very remorseful about what I did. Like I said, I was just trying to make it to the school and get out of there. You know, I did what I had to do. I was trying to get out of there. I did what I had to do. And you know, I was trying to get out of there. And you know, I did what I had to do. Right. We, we know that. Yeah, we know that. Yeah, and and, and I, I was going to ask you that, but you know, um, you know, sometimes, um, man, it, it's it's evident. You know what I'm saying? You know, we we don't we don't we don't, we don't have any foregone conclusions or anything, but you know. Just from the, this convo, you know, it's clear, and um, you know, we'd like to stay in touch with you, brother. Um, and and you know, anytime you need to rap or whatever, or, or take your mind off, you know, um, uh, I, I I got jokes as well, so you know, what I'm saying I could talk trash about some of the photos I saw of you and all that, you know, to make you feel better. <laughs> You good, brother, man. Appreciate you, man. Love you, man. Stay on point. Stay focused. And, and, and we got we got clemency coming, and then we gonna get you free, brother. Okay, I appreciate that love, man. No doubt, bro. Yes, sir, brother. Yes, sir. Stay strong. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. Stay strong. Thanks. Man, um, that was heavy, huh, Dr. James? Uh, yes, it was, and it was necessary. So I'm grateful that he had time. And of course, we understood his 
emotional register is deep and we knew he had deep remorse. It's everywhere. You can read anything that he says. But we also wanted to know more about him and how he was doing. I know, I know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's wild that here it is, you know, we're looking at this situation that, um, you know, I mean, just the fact that he was 17 and he's, what, 37 now? This is like 20 years ago. Excuse yeah. me, he was 19. 19. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and so like 18 years ago. And here it is, they're talking about, uh, the state is literally talking about murdering him. And, you know, November 29th, which is, man, what, 22 days from now, you know, three weeks and some change, uh, they're talking about executing this man who's clearly remorseful. But not only that, you know, he's telling us that, you know, his daughter has been living with the fact that her mother was murdered right. two years after he was um, uh, incarcerated. And I mean, this is like an incredibly, I don't know if sad is the word to use. And well, if it, you know, not, it's so many layers of tragedy, right? But also, I mean, this is something I think I was going to ask you about. It felt like the teenagers are raising the kids and then they're self-soothing themselves and then they have emotional and psychological distress because the culture is just so violent and and they're not enough resources. So, I mean, he had a mental health breakdown and he had a weapon at the same time. And so, as he said, you know, maybe if he hadn't had a device, you know, things would be different, but a lot of things would have to be different. Like the school system, you know, <laughs> police that's a whole other like galaxy I don't want to talk about but enough food in the house enough protection enough shelter um the state and society left him adrift with his siblings right and it's not even clear how bam bam died or from what and just the dishonor toward the mothers and the grandmothers I mean, he you know it's like atlas and he doesn't even get to shrug right Right. Right. Yeah, no, definitely. And and I, I read somewhere uh, about his grandmother. They said when he turned 18 that they took him, you know, off the uh, off of uh, state or child yeah. welfare protection and, and resources. And she begged them not to. And here it is a year later. This thing happens, you know, yeah. um, so it, it seems like he, he had been failed from the beginning. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm sorry. She's like, it really upset but here. There's a lot to be upset about, but it's almost as if our children are disposable. So you don't have to keep them alive because you don't anticipate they're supposed to live long or even have happy lives. And right. that he could, he still managed. It's, it was a horror show. He has a list of horrors, right? He still managed to love and to be loved. And there are people who have a ton of money and a ton of whiteness don't even, they can't pull that off. Right, right, right. Well, we're going to um, continue to uh, fight on his behalf and for our viewers and readers and listeners, we uh, implore and encourage you all to get involved for this fight uh, uh, in regards to clemency for uh, Kevin, and for now, if you can do nothing else, go to uh, mapdmo.org. That's www.mapdmo.org to um, you know sign a petition and also get some marching orders. Learn more about his story um, to our uh, allies and comrades who happen to be in media and academia and just folks who check us out, make sure if you can do nothing else, but, uh, you know, nothing else but retweet and share with your, um, with your network. That's a start. We're looking at, you know, this situation by the time this airs, you know, three weeks or less is, you know, can determine the fate of this man, uh, of his life. And, and I have to say, just from speaking to so many, um, brothers that have been on death row 
and and hearing their voices and working with them and seeing their families there's no type of pain like knowing that they are planning on taking this person's life and you not being able to do anything about it you know and i would i would just say i mean you know we're gonna say do the 360 wrap here right the loss of the life of the officer is a tragedy to their family and their communities and society writ large right but what we've also been talking about is child abuse and child neglect there's a dead 12 year like who would be 30 and then there is a 37 year old who should be home you know, helping to babysit the grandson and help make dinner with his daughter. And so Cori Bush, I mean, there are some allies in government to the extent that they're helpful and they're also the um, antagonists, but I'm really grateful to Michelle and to the Missouri activists for like bringing this to our attention and also Kalonji, your platform and BPM. Thank you. And we, and we appreciate you for uh, taking time out of out of your busy schedule to uh, join us and, and represent, you know, um, you know, your position, your role, because there's so many folks, you know, we, we're getting I'm hearing for the, from the folks in Missouri, how so many elected officials out there and, and folks who are, quote unquote, allies are saying, uh, you know, well, the election is coming tomorrow, so wait till after mm -hmm. the election and all this type of stuff. And honestly, you know, it is it is sickening to hear that here's a man who we don't even know if he'll be alive in another month. And his life is secondary to an election. You know what I'm saying? His life does not, but we're yelling Black Lives Matter. So the contradictions are... are you know, full frontal, you know what I'm saying? It's like right here in your face, it's saying like, okay, you know, well, you know, we, we, we can address that, but for now, you know, we have this election, so put that on pause. So to them, to those folks who are, are saying that, you know, what if this was your brother or your son or your, you know, or, or your child or you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, what is secondary to life itself? You know, so this is what we're dealing with. And our hearts go out to his daughter, Corey, because his daughter happens to be named Corey as well. That's right. Yes. And and to, uh, you know, to his grandson. And, um, you know, keep following us here at Black Power Media. We intend on, like uh, like we just told Kevin, we're not going to be liars to, you know, add on and, and try to provide some type of um, assistance um, for the, uh, you know, for his daughter and uh and, and grandson but um we have some things coming up on on this friday check us out we will be live on this platform at 2 p.m be joined by uh Duba ben wahad dylan rodriguez um mike brown uh senior uh ml will be joining us from um from missouri and also dr joy james you'll be joining us again correct uh i hope to be joining you yes Okay, so that's a yes if you come on here. But anyway, <laughs> we appreciate uh, you joining us and we appreciate you all checking us out. Riot Started TV, Black Power Media. Till next time, free KJ. <laughs>